everyone, thank you for joining me here today at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura and today I am here to explain the plot of LA Confidential, a book by James Elroy published in 1990. Now are people clamoring for someone to explain a plot of a book that was written over 30 years ago? Probably not, <laughs> but I recently read this book and I found it so incredibly confusing and I myself was looking for someone to explain it all, but I didn't find anyone out there who like laid it all out. So I thought I would be the one to do it. So I read the book once through and then I went through it again a second time and just kind of skimmed it and like read the important passages and put together this uh, little wall I got behind me <laughs> as a way to make sense of this plot because there are so many characters, there are so many side plots and these side plots and side characters all end up relating to the main plot and so there's just so many details and so many characters. So I am here to help you out and explain it to you. And I will say this movie was adapted in 1997 but this is not about the movie. There are differences between book and movie with the plot so if you want to hear the details for the movie my book versus movie will be out tomorrow but for today this is specific to the book. Oh and by the way this book is from the perspective of three different detectives. So from the perspective of Bud Wendell White, Jack Vincennes, and Ed Exley. So in the book you find out about the plot as they find out about all these details, but I am not going to tell it to you in order in which they find out. I'm going to tell you in chronological order. So this is not the way the book is written. This is just a way to tell it in a way that'll make more sense. Uh, real quick before getting into the plot, I do want to give a few disclaimers for one. There will be spoilers for the book, which I, I feel like it's obvious, but I want to say that anyway. But I also want to say that I don't claim to be the absolute expert on this book. There could be things I'm getting wrong. I also have never read the other books in the LA Quartet. So if there's something from the previous books that explain things in LA Confidential, then I wouldn't know that because I haven't read those two books. So if you know the plot better and you know some of the backstory that I don't, please comment down below and inform me and correct me if I get something wrong in this video. But I did my best to give a thorough explanation as far as the mystery aspect of this plot for the most part. So, so I just wanted to say that, you know, it's possible I could get something wrong here and that if I did, please comment down below and let me know. Oh, and also the lighting in this video is pretty bad. I didn't realize it until I was editing, so I apologize for the weird lighting. But anyway, let's get to the rest of the video. So we begin with Pierce Patchett and Ray Dieterling. So these two guys are friends. Ray Dieterling has dreams of being a cartoonist and wants fame and fortune, while Pierce Patchett is a chemist and kind of a sicko because he comes up with these crazy cartoon ideas, or just these crazy ideas, and then Ray will then draw it and turn it into a cartoon. And these cartoons are very graphic, both violently and sexually, which I don't want to be demonetized, but dirty pictures are a big part of the plot, but I'm just going to call them dirty pictures without getting specific I'll just refer to it that way. Anyway so that friendship is going on between these two. Meanwhile Ray gets married and he has a son Paul and then while he is married to Paul's mom he has an affair with this other woman and that affair leads to the illegitimate child Doug Dieterlein who later becomes known as David Mertens and I'm just going to refer to him as David because that is how he was referred to throughout the book. But eventually Paul's mother dies and Ray gets remarried to another woman and he has a son named Billy. But so with David, David's mom seems to have some mental illness and it apparently also like genetically transferred to David as well so he's kind of mentally unstable. Plus he is raised watching these weird cartoons that our Pierce Patrick came up with that Ray drew. So not only does he have like a mental instability that but he's also being influenced by these gross cartoons. And then down the road when David is like in his late teenage years I believe there are these Frankenstein killings that happen. So it, there are these killings that are happened and they're called the Frankenstein killer and Ray finds some evidence that leads him to know that David is involved but of course that's his son and he doesn't want him getting in trouble and so he knows that David is friends with this guy Lauren Atherton and so David and Lauren Ather Atherton are the Frankenstein killer. So Ray gets this idea to have his plastic surgeon friend Terry Lux do plastic surgery on David to make him look different because David and Paul by the way look very similar like they almost look identical so you know they're related but he gets David to get some plastic surgery done and with David's new face Ray coaches David as well as this 
So also by this time, Ray Dieterlein has this dream a dream company, which is basically like Walt Disney. So Ray D Dieterling is like the Walt Disney in this fictional world. And so his company is Dream a Dream. And Miller Stanton is this child actor who works for Dream a Dream. So Miller Stanton and David Mertens are coached as to what to tell the police so that they can go to the police. And these two guys, two kids, because David is a teenager and Miller Stanton is young. So they coach these two kids to come forward to the police and say that they saw Lauren Atherton with Wee Willie Wendell Home, who is someone who is a victim from the Frankenstein case. So they testify against Lauren Atherton saying they saw him with this child and Lauren Ather Atherton is convicted and executed and they think the case is closed on the Frankenstein killer. And by the way, the cops in charge of the Frankenstein case was Preston Exley and Art Despain. Preston Exley being the father of Ed Exley. So after Lauren Atherton is taken care of, Ray Dieterling gets plastic surgery done yet again. He has Terry Lux perform some plastic surgery on uh, David so that he will look different once again, so that people won't recognize him as the guy who testified against Lauren Atherton. So he gets new plastic surgery, he gets a fake name, David Mertens, and then they hire Jerry Marsalis to be David's nurse and to like monitor his medications. And then Billy, Ray's other son, Billy works for this TV show, Badge of Honor, which is like a cop TV show. And so Ray is able to get David a job on Badge of Honor, along with Jerry Marsalis. So the two of them are on badge of honor, Jerry is David's nurse. And so Billy also becomes close with David because now they work together and Billy doesn't realize that that is his stepbrother who has had like multiple plastic surgeries done. And people know that Jerry is David's nurse, but they just say that David has like epilepsy or something and that's why he needs a nurse and that's why he's on medication. But then, so Lauren Atherton has been executed for the Frankenstein killings, but then a woman comes forward to Preston Exley, the cop in charge, sorry. <laughs> A woman comes forward to Preston Exley and Artis Bain, and she tells them that she had seen Paul Dieterling with Lauren Atherton with Wee Willie. And so Preston Exley then confronts Ray and he's like, hey, like your son was involved with Lauren Atherton and he's part of the Frankenstein killings. Ray Dieterling, remember before the plastic surgery, David looked a lot like Paul. So Ray knows that David is the one that that woman had seen and she mistook him for Paul. But guess what? Ray does not like his son, Paul. He prefers his son, David, apparently. And so he tells, he lies and he tells Preston like, yes, you're right, that was Paul. He was involved in the case. And Preston Exley is like, I mean, I can't let him go free, but I will save you the public humiliation if you just kill him on your own. So Ray takes Paul out to go skiing and he kills him, but he lies and he tells the public that Paul died in an avalanche. And then to return to Jerry Marsalis, David's nurse. So it turns out this guy is a real sicko too. And so he will hire people, women and men from Florida Lee, Florida Lee being a escort company of sorts. So he hires men and women from this company, by the way, Pierce Patchett, owns Florida Lee. Jerry Marsalis will hire these people and he pays them to pose for these photos and Doug or David Mertens is also involved and so they just do these weird dirty pictures and some of them involve like fake death scenes with fake blood and stuff. And then Jerry, he wants to sell the, these dirty pictures. And so he approaches this guy, Duke Cathcart, who is a pimp. So he hires this guy to find someone to print and sell these dirty pictures. So Duke Cathcart approaches the Enkling brothers. I think that's what their last name was. These guys own a print shop. So he approaches them being like, hey, do you want in on this? And can you print it? And then the Enkling brothers somehow have a connection to Mickey Cohen, who is like this local crime boss and he is currently in jail. But they approach Mickey Cohen asking if he wants to finance this project. Mickey Cohen doesn't and he turns it down. However, this guy, David Goldman, who is connected to Mickey Cohen, they were both crime people, he had bugged Mickey Cohen's cell. So he hears the Enkling brothers approaching Mickey about this project and he is interested in this. So he hires Dean Van Gelder. <laughs> to uh, get, you know, cause this guy is also in prison. And so he hires this guy to learn more about these dirty pictures and to uh, get involved. And Dean Van Gelder ends up impersonating Duke Cathcart and he and Sue Lefferts who are dating, he, they end up killing Duke Cathcart and Dean Van Gelder ends up, you know, dressing like Duke and pretending he is him and kind of taking over the things that Duke had had going on including the dirty pictures. 
And then Jerry Marsalis, he had also approached Pierce Patchett about being involved in this, but Pierce was like, ah, no, I'm not interested. However, after Jerry Marsalis is, approaches Pierce, because Jerry Marsalis is connected to this popular TV show, Badge of Honor, remember? And so Pierce Patchett, he knows Sid Hudgens, and Sid Hudgens runs this gossip magazine, and Sid Hudgens has been wanting to get a piece in on the Badge of Honor to like show how messed up that TV show is. So Pierce Patchett is like, hey, uh, I know about these dirty pictures that are going on, and Jerry Marsalis is involved. And so Pierce Patchett and Sid Hudgens are like, you know what, because Pierce Patchett owns Florida Lee and so he knows all these celebrities who have all these weird fetishes and stuff, they decide to work together in this blackmail thing where Pierce Patchett will get photos of celebrities and then Sid will get those photos and blackmail the celebrities and then Sid and Pierce split the money that they make. So Sid approaches Jerry Marsalis and blackmails him with the information he had got from Pierce Patchett. Jerry does pay Sid off. However, he later... So Jerry will also mess with David's prescriptions, medications. And so depending on how many medicines he gives him, David can be... He can control how stable or unstable stable David is. And so when he wants someone to die, he can just manipulate the medications and manipulate David and get him to do what he wants. So he gets David to kill Sid Hudgens. And then with the Frankenstein case, the reason it was called the Frankenstein case was because of the way the bodies were found. And I'm not going to get graphic here, but basically, you know how I said they pose the pictures, some of them as if it's like a crime scene or something, or like people have been killed. The way the people are posed with the fake blood and stuff is similar to the Frankenstein case. Plus the way David kills Jack Sid Hudgens is also very similar to the Frankenstein case. But the only people who have seen photos of the Frankenstein case, you know, David, because he was involved, as well as Preston and Artis Bain and Ed Exley, because Ed Exley wanted to be a cop. And so his dad showed him these pictures as a way to be like, you know, are you sure you want to get into this? Because, you know, this is the sick stuff you'll come across. Then later, there is a killing at the Night Owl Cafe where six people are killed, three of which were employees at the Night Owl. The other three people who were killed are Sue Lefferts, Dean Van Gelder and Mal Lunsford. And Dean Van Gelder was dressed as Duke Cathcart. So originally when their bodies are found, they think it is Duke Cathcart who has been killed. And it's not until like halfway through the book that Bud realizes that it's not Duke, it's this guy, Dean Van Gelder. And then, like I said, Sue Lefferts had worked with Duke but then when she met Van Gelder, the two of them ended up being together. And Mal Lunsford is a disgraced cop who became a security guard. And basically, so Dudley Smith is this high up cop and he's a dirty cop and turns out he ordered the night owl killing and he hired these guys who had worked for Mickey Cohen, but Mickey Cohen is currently in prison so they don't have anything to do. So Dudley hired Lee, Abe, and Johnny Stompanato to do the night owl killings because he wanted to get rid of Dean Van Gelder because Dudley also wants in on this dirty pitcher's racket. So he wants to get rid of any loose ends. So he wants him dead. And then he also wants Mal Lunsford dead. It has something to do with him being an ex-cop. And I think it's related to Buzz Meeks. So Buzz Meeks is also a cop. And at the beginning of the book, we find out that he has stolen some H from Mickey C. H being a certain type of intravenous substance. So Buzz Meeks has stolen this H. And in the beginning of the book, Dudley kills Buzz to get the H. And so I think Mel Lunsford was involved in that. I should double check though. Anyway, like I said, Dudley is wanting to close up any loose ends with both the dirty pictures as well as the H drug scene. And so that is why he mainly wanted Dean Van Gelder killed. But Mel Lunsford was kind of just like two birds with one stone. And then Sue Lefferts and the three employees were just like just happened to be there. Um, and then also with the age that Buzz Meek stole, so some of it he kept, which later Dudley got, but some of it he also gave to the Enkling brothers who he had known some way. And basically from the Enkling brothers, it ends up with Pierce Patchett, who remember I said was a chemist. And so Pierce is working with this to create a new strain of age. And so flash forward ahead, Dudley Smith also has Pierce Patchett killed because again, He's trying to close up loose ends and he wants to be the boss and the one in charge for this whole scene. And so he has Pierce Patchett killed near the end of the book. And then with the Night Owl case, so they do arrest three men, Coates, Fontaine, and Jones. They were they are wrongfully arrested and accused of the Night Owl case. 
However, when Ed Exley's interrogating them, he finds out that they had also kidnapped a woman that night and her name is Inez Soto. And he and Bud are able to go rescue Inez and they save her. Ed introduces her to Ray Dieterling and she's obsessed with Dream a Dream, which by the way, this guy, Timmy Valburn, works for Dream a Dream and he has friends with Billy. Well, he and Billy are like in a relationship, but Timmy plays Moochie Mouse, which is clearly a play on Mickey Mouse. But anyway, so she is obsessed with Dream a Dream and Moochie Mouse and Ray Dieterling takes a liking to her. Plus he feels sorry for what she's been through. So he hires her and she starts working for Dream a Dream and becomes close with Ray and Preston because Preston is a former cop. But when the story begins, he is now like an investor and a construction person. And he has in invested in Dream a Dream. And then also Coates, Fontaine and Jones end up escaping and then they end up being killed. And Dudley Smith had like planted false evidence to make people think, you know, to draw evidence away from him basically. And Duke Cathcart, what they thought was Duke Cathcart's body, by the way, Dudley also thought it was Duke Cathcart. He puts Bud on the case to figure out the stuff with this guy who died. And it's because that's actually the whole reason the killing happened was for this guy. And he puts Bud on the case because everybody assumes Bud is just stupid. And he's like, you know, what? I'll have Bud look after the Duke Cathcart section and it will lead nowhere because he's too stupid to find anything out. But I really like the character of Bud because he really proves to people that he's smarter than he seems, right? He's not just the muscle. He actually, you know, gathers all this evidence and learns to, uh, and learns the truth about Dean Van Gelder and everybody is so surprised that he was capable of that. By the way, also with Inez, she has a relationship with Ed Exley, but she also is sleeping with Bud White on the side. And Bud White, through his interrogations after Duke Cathcart, so Duke, looking into the real Duke Cathcart, because that's who they think died, he finds this woman named Kathy Janeway, who is a prostitute who had worked for Duke. And she, Duke had bought her from this guy, Dwight Gillette. And when he looks at Dwight Gillette's books, he sees the names Pierce Patchett and Lynn Bracken. And that is because Pierce Patchett had also bought Lynn from Dwight. And so he interviews Pierce Patchett as well as Lynn Bracken. And he and Lynn Bracken, end up forming a relationship and they date and they're together. And then she also, at some point in the book, starts sleeping with Ed as well. So both of these two guys are sleeping with the same two women. And then also Kathy Janeway, she ends up dying shortly after Bud speaks with her, like the next day or something. And then from there, cause this book spans like 10 years, more than 10 years. And so he, Bud White ends up tracking like all these other women who are killed. And long story short, he earn, he learns that Deuce Perkins is the one who killed Kathy along with these other women. And Deuce had been hired by Dudley to tail Bud, which is how Deuce knew about Kathy to begin with. And then from there, he just kills other women that he comes across. So that's like another side plot that was kind of related to the main plot as well. And Spade Cooley and Deuce Perkins are connected to like uh, the three Mickey C mob men who are working for Dudley, but they also like are in a band that tours as well. But yeah, remember how I said Dudley wanted Duke Cathcart killed because, and he kills Pierce Patchett because he wants control of the whole situation. And so he also tries to kill Mickey C and David Goldman. However, however Mickey C ends up being fine. Goldman ends up kind of losing it mentally. And so when Jack Vincennes goes to interview him, he's just not really there. Um, but basically with this whole plot, so Jack, Ed, and Bud are all researching the night owl while also researching uh, these dirty pictures. They're trying to figure out who's making these. And so in the end, you know, Bud realizes Deuce Perkins has been killing these women and he dies. They find out these three, they killed Pierce Patchett and they also did the night owl case because Dudley told them to, but they find these three people and they kill them. They never get Dudley because no one ever confesses that Dudley was involved, but they know he was. But in the end of the book, Dudley is still going free. But Ed vows like, I'm gonna get Dudley, but we don't actually see him get him at the end of this book. Anyway, Jack Vincennes had been the main guy who was connected to the Dirty Pictures because he was in that group that was uh, looking into that, trying to figure out who was making these. And he was connected to Sid Hudgens because the two of them would work together to and Sid had known about Jack's past, how he accidentally killed these two innocent people. And so Sid kind of blackmails Jack into helping him get like the inside scoop. And Jack is the one who actually finds Sid Hudgens' body, but he doesn't say anything because he's worried about if people are researching into the information Sid has, he's worried people will find out about him. But yeah, then 
So we have the Enkling brothers who, again, they were printing these pictures and they were also the ones who reached out to Mickey C. But these two guys end up being found dead, you know, a few years down the road. And basically we find out that Art Despain, who had been involved in the Frankenstein case, he was partners with Preston Exley. He had seen these dirty pictures at the police station and he recognized it and he was like, wow, that's exactly like the Frankenstein case. And so he wants to find out who made these pictures. So he goes to see the Enkling brothers to interrogate them. And while he is trying to figure out who made the pictures, he ends up killing the Enkling brothers and not even finding out who made the pictures. But Ed Exley realizes the truth about the involvement of Ray Dieterling and the connection to the Frankenstein case. And so he approaches Ray Dieterling and Ray Dieterling tells the whole backstory of David Mertens. Also, Jerry Marsalis ends up dying. Uh, David ends up killing him at some point. He also ends up killing Billy, which was very sad. Um, but David Mertens, when Ed comes across him, he can't bring himself to kill him, even though David Mertens is a murderer. He just isn't mentally there. And so Ed just can't bring himself to kill him. And so he ends up taking David Mertens to Terry Lux, that doctor. He's a plastic surgeon, but he's also a doctor. And so Ed takes David to Terry and he's like, hey, like, will you watch him and put him in, you know, institutionalize him so he will stop hurting people, but so that he doesn't have to die. And Terry agrees. But then, so Ed now knows that his father was involved in the death of Paul, who was totally innocent. So Ed confronts his father. He basically tells him like, I'll give you a few days to get your affairs in order and then we're coming after you. But within a few days, Preston, Ray, and Inez are all found dead at Dream a Dreamland. And it appears they have committed suicide in order to avoid the public humiliation of being caught for what happened. Aside from Inez, she wasn't involved in any of that. She just worked for Dream a Dream and she was very close to both Preston and Ray. And so I guess she just decided to go down with the ship essentially, which I didn't love that she died in the end. I thought she should have kept living, but anyway. But yeah, by the way, Jack Vincennes unfortunately dies when they are going after Deuce Perkins. Bud White is severely injured, but he lives and he and Lynn live happily ever after. And then Ed also lives and he gets a promotion in the police force and he vows to Bud White that he is going to get Dudley, Dudley because Dudley is still walking free at the end of this book, like I said. And I think that wraps it up on the plot. <laughs> I know that was a bit all over the place. I have a few names on here that didn't really add to the overall mystery plot of this, but I included them on here anyway. For example, Thomas is Preston's other son. So it is Ed's brother, but he, is, he, he died. So he's dead by the beginning of the book. So he doesn't really play a part. And then Jack marries this woman named Karen and Karen has a sister named Joan who is married to the DA Ellis Lowe. So Jack is like connected to the DA through marriage. Oh, and then we have Dick Stensland who had been partners with Bud White. But at the beginning of the book, there's this event that happens at the police station where multiple police officers beat up, like severely beat up these Hispanic prisoners and they call it bloody, bloody Christmas. And so the cops are like, you know, we need to answer for this. Someone has to take the fall. And Ed ends up um, being an eyewitness and turning against his fellow cops, which he should be right, because the fellow cops were wrong. Anyway, so Dick Stenslin ends up taking the fall and he is kicked out of the forest and his life just kind of goes down the tubes from there. And he eventually ends up being put in jail and is executed for something. But he gives in his will, he gives Bud like $6,000 and Bud uses that money to further his education. But that's why also when Bud and Ed Exley need to pair up in this book, you know, they have so much animosity towards each other because of what happened to Dick Stensland. Plus on top of that, you have Bud had been sleeping with Inez who was like Ed Exley's girlfriend, but then he finds out Ed Exley had been sleeping with Lynn who was Bud's girlfriend. But by the end of the book, they are on better terms and have more respect for each other. And then, Trash Can Jack, which Trash Can is his nickname, he ends up like inadvertently con confessing like his, the things he feels worst about, which, you know, is the death of those two innocent people. He ends up confessing that to Karen when he is like in the hospital sort of unconscious, but he ends up being relieved that he told her and she tells him like she still loves him. She doesn't hold it against him. And so it seems like he is at a good place when he ultimately ends up dying. So he still had a good character arc, even though, you know, he doesn't make it to the end. Oh, and then we have these people who work for Florida Lee. So Lamar Hitton, Chester, Billy Inge, and Christine and Daryl Bergeron. And their names all come up because they're connected to Florida Lee, Florida Lee. 
And by interviewing these various people, they are just able to piece things together. So they themselves don't play like a key role. Although Jack Van Sands recognizes some of them in the dirty pictures, and that is what ultimately leads him to Florida Lee and all of that stuff. But yeah, I think that wraps it up. So <laughs> I hope that helps you understand the plot of LA Confidential more. So like I said, when I finished the book, I was so confused. <laughs> and so now I feel like I understand it pretty well. And I hope that video made sense. And I hope now you can understand the plot as well. And like I said, tomorrow my book first movie episode comes out. So if you want to hear about the movie plot and how it compares with the book and which I prefer, go check that out tomorrow. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.